Hi everyone. Today we're not going to be doing a French press brew guide video. We've already done one of those that you can watch by clicking the link below. And we're not even really going to discuss in detail this particular French press, although it is very nice. We'll talk about some of the features. What I want to do here is try and convince you that something like this can be a really nice addition to your home brewing arsenal if you already have a different kind of coffee brewer. I wouldn't typically recommend that this is the first coffee brewer someone buy if they don't have anything to prepare coffee with at home because it's really, really slow. And if you're trying to convince someone that grinding their own beans, preparing their own coffee is worth it, if that whole rigmarole is even worth the results you get, this is going to be harder to convince them because of the time it takes. But as an addition to what you already have, it can be really fantastic for a couple of reasons. So someone with no coffee brewing apparatus at home, I wouldn't necessarily say buy a French press as your first coffee brewer because it's very, very slow. But if you already have a few bits and bobs, this is a really nice addition because it requires no filter papers. So if you're using a V60 every morning and you run out of filter papers or an AeroPress, it doesn't matter if you've got this in your cupboard as a backup brewer. And also if you're preparing breakfast or having coffee with friends and you don't want to be away at the side doing one thing, then making your omelet or missing conversation, really nice to just leave this steeping away and you'll have coffee with no real effort. But for me, what's really interesting is if I buy a new bag of coffee beans or if I'm testing out a new coffee and want to see what flavors are in there, I might not want to just do a pour of it straight away. I'd rather get a clear picture of the coffee. I'd normally cup it, uh, you know, just steep the coffee and water in a, in a vessel and slurp it with a spoon. But you're kind of stuck at the table, then you can't pour yourself a mug and go away. But you can recreate that kind of extraction in a French press and have a really, really clear picture of what you're working with. Now, this particular French press from Time More is called the U, I think because it's just a simple U silhouette, there's no handle on it, which is great. The little plastic sleeves means you can pick it up and there's no issue of it being too hot. It's a glass chamber inside. There is a rubber seal around the mesh, so you don't get any silt coming through when you pour it, which is lovely if you leave it long enough. If you're rushing, it will hold back a bit, but not that much. Um, and if you want to really max it out, it's 500 grams at a real push of water, but 450. Uh, more typically. So if you're using about 27 grams of coffee to 450 grams of water, that's perfect. It seems like that was on purpose because it's about as much coffee as you can fit in their slim hand grinder. I'm going to brew 18 grams of coffee to 300 grams of water and do a really, really simplistic method because all I want to do really is taste the coffee, not influence it with how I'm brewing. And we'll talk about some of the benefits of immersion brewing while we're doing that. So this coffee can just sit and steep. It's created a little cap of foam on the top where the grounds are sitting. So with immersion brewing methods in general, it's very, very easy to achieve an even extraction. That's a really nice benefit of immersion over pour over methods. The grounds and water are just hanging out together as long as you pour aggressively and stir it at some point between one and five minutes, whatever you're brewing with, you're going to achieve a relatively even extraction. So I'm going to use a spoon to go in here at two minutes to give it a real nice churn and that's gonna make sure everything's sort of extracted evenly. The other really nice thing with immersion brewing methods is that they are repeatable. From cup to cup, you're likely gonna have really consistent results because the process is so simple. It's not as dependent on a very refined technique. The final thing about immersion brewing methods that I think is really nice is that they're forgiving. By that I mean, if your grind size is a little too fine or too coarse or your brew water cooled a little too much, that matters a lot less in immersion brewing than it does with pour over brewing. Part of that is the extended steep time, you know, the time it's taking for the coffee to actually extract, and the emphasis on technique not really being there, it's just sort of sitting and doing its thing. You just find the coffee sort of extracts to a certain level, and it's going to be more likely than not tasty compared to a pour of a coffee. Typically, I find plunging slower is much preferable to plunging fast. If you plunge really fast, you're going to stir up some of that sediment that we're working to have settle to clarify the brew liquor. So one drawback of immersion methods in general is that you have to solve the problem of how do I get the brewed coffee grounds out of my brewed coffee. With the steep shot, it uses the pent up pressure within the brewer to eject the brewed coffee through the filter. Same kind of thing with the air press, you're plunging through that filter paper, so you're creating your own pressure. With the clever dripper, it's tricky because the brewed coffee has to drip through a paper filter and through the coffee bed, and it's prone to clogging. But if you check out our clever dripper brew guide, that problem can be solved by tweaking the recipe. With the French press, it's very simple. All you need to do is leave it. And as you leave it and the grind settle on the bottom, that brew liquor is going to clarify and not really have any grounds in it. And then you just need to pour really slowly into your jug, hold back the very last few drips coming through, and you will have a really, really clear, clean cup of coffee. Super duper easy to do, pretty much a hands-free brewer 
one time that you need to get in there and stir and one time to plunge, that's it. So very, very simple. What I like about uh, the French press in this instance is it's a really good way to, to give you a clear picture of the coffee you're working with. So what I can do now is pour a little bit of this, have a taste, and I'll get a really nice picture of how much sweetness there is in the coffee, the type of acidity it possesses, how much bitterness there is. That's going to then dictate if I want to make a pour of a coffee, how do I affect my grind to recreate this or to bring out more acidity or to bring out more bitterness and sort of move the coffee in the direction I want as a consumer. What is also nice about brewing the French press is you don't lose any of the coffee's natural body because it's just going through a mesh filter. It's not uh, stripping back any of the oils or really, really fine particles that are going to contribute a bit of mouthfeel. So the coffee's really, really creamy in this instance. It's lovely. Mm. And I know now if I feel like this coffee is sweet but not, not having much acidity or many dimensions to it, I could go a little coarser and try a pour over to see if I can give it a bit more pop and lift at the expense of some intensity. Or if I felt like this is tasting a bit sour and a bit thin, I would fine up my grind and take a long time doing a pour over coffee and try and create a bit more robustness of flavor and you know, bring out a bit more character. Mm. So as a way to really easily almost guarantee you a tasty cup of coffee, this little French press is a great addition to your brewing arsenal, but also as a way to sort of get to know your coffees, it's really, really nice as well as being a nice backup brewer if you run out of filter papers or if you want to do something hands-free. So there's many reasons why I feel like this is a nice addition to your coffee brewing arsenal at home. And thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon.